Welcome back friends. In this series of videos, we are going to talk about the DNA transcription process in details. I find many videos in YouTube about DNA transcription but not many of them are detailed because if you are a bachelor student or a master student or if you are doing a PhD, you must know uh, the three major biological process that is DNA replication, DNA transcription and uh, the protein synthesis or translation. So I'm going to do all the video series about those three topics. Now in this series of videos, I'll be talking about the DNA transcription process, majorly the DNA transcription in prokaryotes, because I've already talked about the DNA transcription process in eukaryotes in different set of videos. You can find them in the YouTube channel and you can just search for the uh, DNA transcription of eukaryotes or transcription in eukaryotes and you can see them. Now the thing is, uh, the transcription is a very, very important event. And it is a part of the central dogma of biology. That is, we have DNA. DNA contains every information that is need to be coded or need to have. But from the DNA, the information should be transferred to some form which can actually work. Because DNA itself, it's not working. It is the master. It, they rule our whole body, our whole cell by sitting there inside the nucleus. So what DNA does actually, it provides something, some messenger to go there and follow the task that the DNA have to do and that those messengers are the RNAs that we are going to talk about, right? So those RNA contain the information that are coded in the DNA, those RNA will move from nucleus into the cytosol and then they will be translated into protein products. Now those proteins are the functional unit of our body. They will do all the functions according to the law or rule of DNA, according to whatever is written inside the DNA, right? So the thing is, in this DNA transcription overview, this video is about to be the overview of the DNA transcription and how we are going to talk about it in future videos. This is going to be four videos. This is the first one and then we'll be talking about the transcription initiation, elongation and termination. So the DNA transcription in prokaryotes is many way different than the DNA transcription in eukaryotes. Because uh, generally the replication process in prokaryotes and eukaryotes and the protein synthesis in prokaryotes and eukaryotes are kind of similar, but the transcription is a kind of different. And the way it is different, because you know in prokaryotic cell, if, if I write, write it here, in prokaryotic cell, prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So if I draw them, in prokaryotic cell, what we can see here, that the genetic material, whatever it is, a DNA most of the time, so that is present in the cytosol. Whatever genetic material it is, let's say, whatever genetic material, it is present in the cytosol. But in eukaryotes, this genetic material is placed inside a different organelle and we know what it is. It is nucleus and there we can find the DNA, right? So, First difference is that the eukaryotic transcription occurs inside the nucleus, but the prokaryotic transcription must occur in the cytosol, right? So for the eukaryotic system to work properly, they need to bring all the nucleotides inside the nucleus and everything inside the nucleus to produce the mRNA, RNA. And when we are talking about the RNA or DNA transcription or the production of RNA, we are majorly talking about the mRNA or messenger RNA because that messenger RNA contains all the code or codons to uh, translate into the proteins, right? So once the transcription is done, once the RNA is made, for example, let's say this blue thing is the RNA and that is produced, both the case. In, in prokaryotes, that RNA is the functional unit because in prokaryotes, they don't have any junk element in their DNA. Whatever element, whatever uh, codon is present, whatever code is present in the DNA, that those all nucleotides code for a specific proteins, right? So all of these are kind of exons in function. So those RNA, this RNA, this mRNA is functional and it can translate into proteins. But for eukaryotic system, the RNA that is produced or generated inside the nucleus is not mature RNA because the nucleus contains the chromosome and the DNA and all this DNA that is present in eukaryotic cell only few percent of it is coding in nature. That means only few percent of the DNA is coding for certain proteins. Rest of them are not coding for any proteins. 
So the certain part which are coding for proteins, they're termed as exons. And the parts that are not coding for proteins are termed as introns. So the exons are the only functional unit. So in the RNA, we can find exons as well as introns. So before taking it out inside the cytosol, what this uh, eukaryotic cell need to do is that they need to cleave all those introns out, non-functional units out, and only join all the exons together. This process is called as RNA splicing. RNA splicing. And this RNA splicing is required. Once the RNA splicing is done, then what we get? The RNA with all exon sequences, which are functional. But that's not the it. Because in this case also, once we get that RNA, that RNA will be termed as premature RNA. Because in eukaryotes, that RNA to be modified further. How? Because let's say this is an RNA. We have a 5 prime group and a 3 prime group as usual. Now, in the 5 prime terminal of that RNA, they, cap, they put a cap. That's called the 5 prime cap. Usually, it is made up with guanine. Modified kind of guanine. And also, in the 3 prime section of the RNA, they put a polyadenylation. That's called the 3 prime poly A tail. It's kind of adenylating tail out there. Once these modifications are done inside the nucleus, then only that RNA is ready to move out the nucleus and come into the cytosol and then they will be translated into proteins. So the RNA that is produced inside the nucleus is premature. The extra stage required in eukaryotic transcription is the maturation of that RNA after splicing as well as 5 prime capping as well as 3 prime polyadenylation. In some other cases, in some other eukaryotic system also, there are certain modifications called RNA editing that may also result or occur. But that's not very common thing. That's not very natural. But these things are natural. These things are, uh, these things must be done to make a mature RNA. So once the RNA becomes mature, then only that RNA will be translated into proteins and the translation will occur obviously the translation uh, so the RNA will brought will be brought here and they will be translated into proteins so there are certain extra stages after transcription necessary for eukaryotic cells other than the prokaryotes okay so this is the difference big difference between eukaryotes and prokaryotes now, if you want to know about more about the RNA splicing and RNA editing and all these processes, uh, you can go to my YouTube channel. You will find videos on RNA editing and processing and everything about the details. I will try to put the links of all this video in the description as well as hopefully if it's possible in uh, the <coughs> annotations here. So, let's, let's see about it. So, the transcription process that we are going to talk here is about the prokaryotes because we have already talked about this. This eukaryotic transcription is far more complicated because more enzymes, more factors are required. But in prokaryotic system, we only require certain factors, certain enzymes for the process to occur properly. So in prokaryotes, <coughs> what we need actually, like, like all these cases, another very important thing you must know before starting with this process is that obviously like any biological processes like DNA replication, transcription and translation, we should require uh, enzymes for the work, right? In any biological processes, we do require enzymes. So the enzymes that are required for the prokaryotic transcription that we are going to talk here, as well as the eukaryotes also, that's called the RNA polymerase. Very common enzyme, you probably heard this name a lot. And usually we are going to talk about the polymerase type 2, RNA polymerase Two. Okay, so that is the enzyme usually used in the RNA, I mean the DNA transcription in prokaryotes. And alongside this RNA polymerase, there are other, some other factors that are also found in prokaryotes and some more factors are found in eukaryotes, right? Majorly in eukaryotes, those factors play a vital role and those factors are termed as transcription factors or simply designated as TF like TF1, TF2, TF3, TF4 and so on. 
they also have some detailed names but don't bother about that now the thing is once we have the rna polymerase 2 as an enzyme to work as well as what we require is where a template or something with which they can synthesize this whole process right so they require also the template thing okay so what is acting as a template to help them transcribing the dna into rna because remember the difference between DNA and RNA is that DNA is double stranded, RNA is single stranded and the DNA contains the bases uh, cytosine, uracil, thymine and adenine but on the other hand instead of the thymine RNA contains uracil okay so so in RNA instead of thymine we have uracil that is the difference otherwise it's kind of same because the uracil the chemical property of uracil is kind of similar to chemical property of thymine so that they can pair same type of bonds between adenine only so now the most important thing and i found many students have problem with this particular region so uh, very much carefully let's say there are two strands of dna right let's draw both the strands here these are the two strands of dna one strand let's say 5 prime to 3 prime the opponent form will be like that so two different strands are present in dna double stranded dna now there is a question that we only need to produce one strand as an rna so which dna strand we will choose to have as a template to produce another strand and the answer lies upon the directionality of this process because you know the process like DNA replication transcription or translation they have a fair directionality it should not go back and forth never it has a particular direction to go or follow so the directionality here in DNA transcription just like the replication the directionality here is 5 prime to 3 prime this is the directionality required for the process of DNA transcription in prokaryotes okay so now think about it the directionality 5 prime to 3 prime means the RNA chain that will be synthesized will be from 5 prime to 3 prime it does not mean it will follow the 5 prime to 3 prime of the DNA it means the, the RNA chain that is going to be synthesized they will be synthesized from 5 prime to 3 prime right so if we take this strand as a template, this 5 prime to 3 prime DNA strand as a template and start transcribing in this direction, in that case, will it possible to synthesize 5 prime to 3 prime RNA? The answer is no, because this is if, if this is the way we start, this should be the 3 prime of our RNA and we are going 3 to 5 prime and that is not allowed, that is not possible. So this is not the possibility. So what is the possibility is using this strand because if we start using this blue strand here of the DNA as a template then it is a possibility of transcribing 5 prime to 3 prime of our new RNA sequence and that is how they actually work this is the directionality right so in this particular picture they can use this blue strand as a template right so the blue strand here acts as a template dna strand so once you figure out what is the template dna strand it is fairly easy to conclude what is the other dna strand will be called the other dna strand is usually called as the complementary strand of the template right the complementary strand of template because you know if the template is from 3 prime to 5 prime so obviously the other complementary of the template strand will be from 5 prime to 3 prime and that's we can see so the strand here is is called calling as coding strand now you may ask why coding we know why it is called template strand because it is acting as a template but now remember, if our RNA is using this as a template strand and synthesizing the RNA from 5 prime to 3 prime, let's assume that if it is synthesizing up till like that, 
the DNA, the RNA is going to generate should have the same sequence, the similar sequence like this 5 prime to 3 prime other strand. Because this 5 prime to 3 prime strand is complementary to this 3 prime to 5 prime and our RNA is also complementary to 3 prime to 5 prime. That means that our RNA and these other strand are same, same component of the genetic material. Right? Now, if I give you another small example, you can understand very quickly. Sorry. Let's say, let's say uh, in the top 5 prime to 3 prime, A, T, T, G, G, C, T, A. For example, let's say this is the strand. This was the strand. Now, the opponent strand here, uh, the other strand, the complementary strand of this DNA should have, you know, T, A, A, C, C, G, A, T. Right, five prime and here it is three prime. Right, so this is remember this black one is coding. We are calling it coding. And this blue one we are calling calling it template. Right. So now the third strand that is our RNA strand. RNA is taking this blue one, this template as a template. So the RNA strand that is going to produce the complementary of the template. So the T, definitely the complementary will be A. If there is A in RNA, we have U. Again U. Remember in RNA, it will be uracil instead of thymine. Then in C, we have G's, C, Q, A. And that's it. So now, just compare the two sequences. This coding DNA strand with the RNA sequence. What you will find? A, A, T, T, U, U. When T and U is the same. So, G, C, so these two sequences, as you can see, are the same. So, as the sequence of RNA is same like the opponent complementary sequence of the template DNA, that's why that strand is called as a coding strand. Because ultimately, the RNA, these are, this will be a code, three nucleotide sequence will be code, right? So, the RNA sequence is acting as a coding actually in our body. And the DNA which is having that kind of sequence already in, are called as a coding DNA strand, right? So this is a very important concept. I have seen many people to make mistake in this particular area. So simple idea, try to memorize CT, just CT. Two strands, C, upper one, T, lower end. T is the template, template is the strand which is used by RNA to synthesize the whole RNA. An opponent was the coding, why? Because it's same with the RNA sequence. That's it. That's very simple. Right? So, once you know all these things about the DNA transcription overview, how this whole process will work now, the whole process of DNA transcription will work. So, let me give you a brief overview of this whole process. The overview of DNA transcription works like something like this. Let's say, let's say we have this DNA now. We have two different strands. Remember, we have this coding strand as well as we have this template strand, right? So we have this strand. So five prime, three prime, and so we have this. So let's let's assume that we are drawing it very simply. That's why I'm drawing it planar two-dimensional structure because I cannot draw a three-dimensional structure in a board, which is also a two-dimensional place here uh, in this image. Now, in this case, if this is a coding and template strand that is present, the step-by-step -step process of DNA transcription, in very basic overview, is that there will be the presence of the enzyme RNA polymerase two. So RNA polymerase two. RNA polymerase 2 will come. It has a, a multi small, I mean, subunit complex, right? So, this RNA polymerase 2 will come and join, and that RNA polymerase 2 will actually attach with some region of this DNA strand, I mean, DNA sequence, some region, and it binds with both the strands of the DNA. It does not mean that it will only bind with the template, it binds with both the strands of the DNA, right? In a distance location, somewhere in the particular location. 
and this binding of RNA polymerase 2 in a particular location in the DNA it depends on a specific sequence that is present in the DNA and that sequence is called as consensus sequence consensus sequence so once it is attached to the consensus sequence loosely in that case that loosely bounding content is stabilized by another factor that is associated with RNA polymerase 2 and that is called sigma factor. So sigma factor joins in and will stabilize this whole process, it will stabilize the attachment, right. So let me draw the RNA polymerase here, let us say this is the polymerase and the sigma factor is in green here. So it is added and the structure is kind of stabilized now. So once the structure is stabilized and they attach to a particular consensus sequence, after binding of the sigma factor, they scan for a particular sequence. They just scan for the sequence. So the sequence scanning is going on, right, to the start side. Because you know, in the DNA, there are particular sequences that is telling this RNA polymerase that this is the time to start transcribing the DNA. And those sites are called as promoter sites. So once the RNA polymer is in the place of a right promoter sequence, the sigma factor will lose, right? So they will scan for the DNA and move towards a particular direction here. Let's say this is a particular promoter site they need to look for. So once they reach this promoter site, once they reach this promoter site, in that case, sigma factor will be dissociated. So the sigma factor is now dissociated. Now they are in the coding region. Let us say here it is. Sigma factor now dissociated. The, this RNA polymerase 2 is in the promoter place. Now the RNA polymerase along with some other factors or sometimes itself it start to melt that DNA in that particular area of promoter start melting. Now the first complex formed is called the closed complex and start melting the DNA. Once the DNA start melting, it start to form which is called a bubble like structure. So it will form something like this. So now let us let us do it form formation of a bubble like this. It is kind of have a bubble like structure form. And the polymerase is now still attached with this particular area. Let us say this is right? this is the polymerase bubble like structure formed. After this formation of bubble like structure, then they will start adding all those ribonucleotide sequences, RNA uh, nucleotide sequences will be there. And those nucleotide sequences will start adding in this position. Let us say in this template, they will start add that and start producing the RNA sequence from 5 prime to 3 prime of the RNA sequence production, okay. So this is how the elongation will work now. The sequence, uh, nucleotide sequence will be added one after another, polymerization will take place and they create a chain of RNA. So they start creating the chain of RNA sequence there. So after this production is done, they will do all this elongation pro process until and unless they will hit another particular sequence present in the DNA. And that sequence is a kind of termination signal sequence, right? And the termination can be of two different type. One is called the row dependent termination, other one is the row independent termination or intrinsic termination. So for the row dependent termination, what will happen? There is a protein called rho protein, which is a hexameric protein, by the way. That means it has six different uh, units, subunits. So that rho protein will come and the rho protein will be adhered will be attached with the growing RNA chain. It is not attached anywhere there. The rho is kind of a helicase. You know the DNA replication. So the rho is kind of a helicase, just the similar structure like helicase. And it can actually dissociate DNA and RNA hybrid. So it will just launch itself and it, then it will drag itself towards the top of the RNA synthesis. And once this rho factor re reach uh, at this particular point, let's say the rho reaches here, and during this region, you can see this, there is a formation of this DNA-RNA hybrid and the rho can actually dissociate this DNA-RNA hybrids from each other and the RNA will now fall off, right. 
that is how row dependent process work in row independent process what happens actually during the production of rna in the rna internal sequences for example rna is now produced in the rna internal sequences there are more of a gc rich gc rich content and gc rich palindromic content palindrome means a particular structure which can fold and form loop between themselves for example in this particular structure you can see two g's are placed here and two c's are placed here so similarly if this folds back they can form easily they can here form a loop something like this so the formation of loop takes place there as well as it is followed by followed by somewhere poly u stretch with the adenine sequence of the dna this is the dna situation just focus on this particular area and you can find something like this that itself they are having poly g and c's and they form a palindrome they form a loop and followed by a poly u stretch in the dna uh, it is paired with uh, poly u stretch in the rna obviously then it is paired with the dna adenines so in that case au is a very weak force but gc is a very strong force so the difference in the force combinations there will just rip off the rna from the dna and take the rna out this is the intrinsic termination signal why it is intrinsic because the signal which is a gc rich signal is placed in the rna itself okay so this in a sense is the overview of dna transcription we break it down in three sections for our understanding like the initiation elongation and termination right so the three stages initiation then elongation and then termination from the next videos onward we are going to talk about each of these different sections initiation elongation and termination process in details so if you want to study in details please stay tuned and watch the rest of the videos thank you